Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be setting up this 60 gallon planted aquarium. We will be going over everything I purchased and step by step instructions on how to set up this tank. Jaime will be helping me go over the filter system and I'll be showing you how I planted the tank. At first I want to thank H2O for sponsoring today's video. I have worked with them in the past and their service is awesome. H2O is a great place to get your plants for your tank. They also supply other stuff like fertilizer and wood for your hardscape. Check them out on their website but also be sure to follow them on Instagram and Facebook to catch deals and inspiration for your aquarium. Be sure to tell them that you appreciate them supporting this channel and there's also going to be a coupon code in the description of this video to use at their site. Okay so first off let's talk about the tank. This is a 60 gallon tall aquarium and I've been using it in the past but I've really been wanting to upgrade the tank so I bought a few new things and will be cleaning out and reusing some of the stuff that I already had. Everything will be linked in the description of the video so you can find these products online. I'm using a Fluvol 306 canister filter. Jaime will be going over how to set that up in a bit. First I'm going to unbox all the new stuff for the tank and explain everything that I got. Right now I'm going to be unboxing my shipment from H2O. They are a aquatic plant company so I got a lot of stuff from them. I'm really excited to see it. It's all going to be for the 60 gallon tank. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how it looks. Uh, so this is the box of all this stuff, uh, a lot of plants and all of that. Okay, so, whoa, these are weird looking plants. That's really cool. Okay, so there's this big one. <laughs> Very scared me. Uh, I'm going to actually leave all of the names to the plants down below because I'm basically going to butcher all of them. So here's another one. This one I can say it is the four leaf clover. Justin knows this is my favorite so he sent this one to me. Uh, here's some more. These plants look so pretty. They grow really great. Oh and then I also got some wood from him. This is awesome. Here's another great looking piece. Really beautiful wood and it just makes your tank look so interesting, really adds to it. Jungle Val, Ruby Red. And here's another plant. So I'm gonna show you where all of these plants are going to go inside of the aquarium. Okay, so now this one that I'm unboxing, I'm pretty sure is the light for my planted tank. So basically, I didn't wanna go with the cheapest lighting possible for my planted tank, but I also didn't wanna get like the most high-end light that was gonna be super expensive because I'm not gonna have anything that's super difficult to grow. I just kind of wanted some basic plants, so my light's therefore going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, so if you want a really good light for your tank, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, and you want something just for the basic stuff, then this one's a great one to get. So let's open it. <laughs> okay, so here's my light. As you can see, it's actually a really nice light. So I'm going to link it down below in the description in case you want to get this one for your tank. Like I said, this is not the best one that you can get, but um, unless you're like super into the hobby, you might just want to go with a light that's, you know, not crazy. So uh, this is the one I chose and I think it's going to work really well. I will definitely give you guys updates on this tank in a few months. Okay, so this tank was being used previously. If you've seen my pet room tour and all of that, I did have fish in here. Uh, so we've cleaned out the entire tank, got it really clean so that we can start over again. And right now uh, we're setting up where some of the air bubbles are gonna be coming through. And we're also gonna be laying in the soil and doing um, some of the other stuff like that and also showing you the filter. And what we did is we went ahead and planned out where the rocks are gonna be so that they end up underneath the soil and we're going to run them with a divider that comes from the pump and it's going to divide it into five little different connections. This helps provide extra oxygen in the tank. This isn't always needed but it does help keep your fish healthier and makes your tank look really cool. I'm laying these out down first so that they will end up being covered by the dirt. I'm running the hoses to the back left corner just to keep everything tidy and organized. We bought these air holding clumps 
and they are so that you can kind of keep more control of your hoses so they're not just flying everywhere. Alright, this is a Flubel M version heater. It's actually very nice. It is glass. Um, I, I know it says actually right here, don't submerge over this. A little hard to do that sometimes. It does slip down, but it does offer several clamps. And it gives you a range between a little bit less than 66 all the way to 86 degrees. And it only turns on when the water actually gets that cold. We went ahead and put it on the side where the water comes out of the filter. We got the Fluval 306 tank filter and it comes with two hoses first. Yeah, they actually come together and you actually have to cut them to the size. But this is the first part you need to set up. Okay, so we're mounting the filter right now and that's the one where the water is going to go in. This is the intake and I, I have found from playing around with this one, it is better if you mount one, like the intake separate from the outtake, from the output. Like on the other side of yeah, the Yeah, it just, it works really nice that way. It actually helps filter it out really nice. Okay, so this one over here is the output for the water. So it's going to be where the water is going to be coming out of after it gets filtered. The canister is like this and it comes with several divisions inside. One of the divisions is this red one and this is our, it's technically our physical filtration system which just uses a system of sponges that go all around the, uh, the filtering bracket and just actually just squeeze them in there compact it when you do it and that's okay you want them to be kind of compacted so that you're actually able to filter out this is where you get all your plant matter your dirt all the stuff that's bigger. And so the front ends up looking like this. And then the back you'll do the exact same thing. So it takes a total of four of these sponges. The back ones are easier to fit. You just put them over it. You don't actually have to squeeze them in there. And right now when you actually seal it up, they'll compress. We go into the main chamber. We're going to start by adding the biofoam and everyone has a different setup. That's what's neat about the canister filters. You can set it up however you need to. If you need ammonia reduction, if you need to introduce a different bio system, if you need to introduce different formats in your filtration, you're able to modify them however you need them. And these are very neat. They just actually, you put the little foam spikes to the bottom and they already come pre-cut to the size. So they just actually fit in. They fit in just one way, have the little spikes, and they just go in one way. The next section we're gonna add is a Biomax. Uh, what this allows is it allows your bacteria in your tank to grow in a healthy aspect so that you can keep the bacteria that's necessary for your tank to keep moving forward. What I usually do when you take them out, you'll notice there's a lot of white powder that comes from them. What I usually do is I place them on the canister and then go rinse them out. Our last one is the one that would be considered technically like a chemical filter just because it's active carbon. It just cleans out all the murkiness of your water, reduces the smell if there is any smell and just helps equalize the chemical compounds and reduce any negative chemicals you wouldn't want in your tank. Here is where you would add an ammonia reduction uh, chemical filtration or there's a variety of different systems based on what your tank is needing at that time that you can modify and move as your tank expands and grows and restabilizes itself. On these carbon packets you need to make sure that you do rinse them and if you don't rinse them you end up with some black murky water coming out of your filtration system when it starts. A lot of people add polishing pads what they're called polishing water pads it just adds another layer of filtration to the system some people add them right before the chemical and some people add them on top of the bio filtration system. It's just mainly up to you and up to preference. And you just stack the last block right on top and it comes with a lid. This lid closes off your whole system and at the end it should look something like this. This is the actual system that does the filtration. This is the turbine that's inside. It is a magnetic system. What's important about this is it does have this o-ring that's around it. It may be, it does start wearing down. So it is important to keep an eye on it. And then when it does wear down, you can buy them online. 
and just replace them. I'm using Flugel substrate for this tank since I've had so much success with it in my smaller tank. For this 60 gallon, I ended up using a 17 pound bag and an 8 pound bag to cover the bottom. Anything less would not be enough. If you've watched my other video at this point, I did fill the tank up with water and let it cycle. And I think that's a good idea and now that I've done it both ways, I did prefer to have the water in the tank before planting. But I did have a very hard time reaching the bottom of the tank in this case and decided to plant before adding water because otherwise I would be snorkeling in my tank. Aquascapers do do it both ways so there's really no wrong or right way, it just really depends on what works for you and what's going on with your tank. I'm using Pacific wood in this tank. Once I put the water in, these pieces of wood actually took a while to sink, so I had to put some rocks in there for now. If this happens to you, just remember that the wood is going to eventually sink after a while. The Madagascar lace was my favorite plant. That's the one I'm putting in first. It looks really cool. And it is very tall, so it does go in the back of the tank. Next is the Val plants. We have the Jungle Val and the Italian Val. That is also tall, so you want it kind of in the back. Next I'm planting the crypto plants. There are three different types that I got from H2O and these go in the mid ground of your tank. They aren't super tall but you also don't want to plant them in the very front. Then we have some dwarf sag and that is what we're going to use in front of all the plants as well as a four leaf clover, a personal favorite of mine. I also had a few other plants from my tank originally, so I'm putting those in. I have no idea what these are other than the moss ball, but I'm sure if you ask H2O, he can help you get them. Next, we're gonna start filling up the tank with water. I have a hose leading into the tank, which makes the water changing so easy. The water comes in through here. We built this system so that we could get water from a valve, so we didn't actually have to bring a hose or anything. And what we attach is we actually attach one of the air bubble rocks backwards into it. We attach it and what it does, it doesn't allow it to flow very rapidly. So it doesn't move around your dirt. And this is when some of the wood started to lift. The plants also didn't stay in as well as when the soil is already wet. And a mistake that I made is that I should have put at least a few inches of water into the tank before planting. Before putting your fish in, it's important to test the water of the tank. You can buy a kit or you can take a sample to your local pet store. Usually they test it for free. You want to have low ammonia and nitrate levels before putting your fish in. Usually you need to do a water change again after planting your tank in order to achieve the desired levels. The levels weren't quite as low as I would have wanted them, but we were able to get them to a decent level so that we could put our fish back in. It's way better to do all of this before having fish, but it is possible to upgrade if you already have an existing tank. And here are the finished results. I'm very happy with this tank. I think it looks beautiful and I know it's going to grow very fast because everything I'm using I used in my 15 gallon and it's crazy how quickly that tank grows. I will be posting an update on my tank soon, probably in my next vlog so that you can see how it's doing. I did want to show you guys the light. This is an excellent plant light but it isn't as bright as I expected. So this is the tank with only the Fluval Aqua Fresh light on. It's not super bright. And then this is an extra light that I've been using for the last year. The light is way brighter. It's not as great for freshwater plants, but it is super bright. Unfortunately, I did buy it from a pet store used and I have no idea what brand it is since it was not marked. So that's something to consider when buying lights. I feel like bad lighting can really make your tank look dirty when it's not. Now the reason I'm trying so hard to make this tank perfect is because I am hoping to put discus fish in it, which is pretty ambitious. I've been wanting discus for over a year now and they are considered a very delicate fish. I want to make sure I can provide for them and keep them alive and healthy. Discus are hard fish to care for. Most people put them in a completely empty tank, but I don't want to go that route because I really feel that fish benefit from 
the environmental enrichment of planted aquariums. I want the fish to have a really nice home if I do end up getting them. I would like three to four discus fish. If everything goes well, I'm thinking that maybe in a month or two this tank will be ready for the discus fish. Which is really exciting because for me this has been a long time coming. Thanks so much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and fan me over on YouNow to catch my live streams. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!